a great opportunity that Latam Startups and Elevate Talent partnered together to bring this amazing mojo come to life. I'm Charmaine, and join me as I discuss steps, ways, and ropes in doing a successful market research. After this video, you'll be able to deliver a SWOT analysis for your company, find or build unique, valuable proposition, and identify your client profile. So let's get started. Welcome to the module two, the market research analysis. Before we dip into the content, who am I, you ask? Hello, I'm Charmaine Escalao, and I help struggling international companies to identify market size, opportunities, and threats to successfully strategize their market entry. Just a bit background of my professional history. Currently, I am the market research intern for LATAM startups that perform market studies for more than 15 companies in just four months. I have my postgraduate certificate as a research analyst a training in theories and application of artificial intelligence. And before doing a career shift, I have two years of combined experience in psychometrics and social research. You may connect to me on LinkedIn and email me at research at startups.org. So the goals for this module are to validate information with searches, understand customer profile for the company you are working with, compare client service with competitors, and redefine market entry goals for, for the company that you are working with. The content of this module is designed step-by-step -step guide. We will start in the introduction, company analysis, search based on keywords, industry and market analysis, and lastly, SWOT analysis. Why is market research important? All of these statements that your clients give you without proof are just assumption or hypothesis. In this stage, we validate every information that they give us. It is not that they are wrong, but because of the differences from the origin of the company is different when expanding to new markets. What work in, the home, in their home country may not work in new market. It gives them a picture of new market. They will be aware of the posing opportunities and threats. And clients will realize if they have a market niche. In doing market research, communication with the stakeholders is important. Now, let's get to more about the company. There are many things to consider when looking at the company, but these are the areas that I personally prioritize. I ask my client and list all information I gathered. Hold on to the information and we will use it later in the last part of the discussion. So let's move on to the first point, which is the brand. So how long do they operate? Do they know what they're doing? How long do they perform? Are they clear with their objectives? Are they the masters of their craft? So we need to get to know the identity unto its roots. The next step is customer base. Do they have a loyal customer base? Does the company take care of their customers? That's something I found problematic that I encounter most of the time is when a company transacts with their customer and it's the end of the relationship. Building community within the company's customer is important. Interactive community of loyal customer provides a significant impact on a company's success. We will discuss more about this later. The third point is the balance sheet or the financial figures. Did they really make money? How about the return of investment? The figure speaks loudly. It gives you a glimpse of what actually is happening internally. It sporadically urges you to ask more questions. So if they are performing well, you'll ask, amazing, what are they doing to be this good? If they're underperforming, you'll be curious of what went wrong. Now let's identify the company's client. What's the difference between your client and end user? So client 
pays for the service or the product and the end user uses the service or product. A client can be end user at the same time or they could be a different person. It's just that you have to know what they do and what is their role into this business. Also, ask how the business relationship model is. Is it B2B? Is it B2C? Is it P2P? Or so on. What's the demographics? Was age, size, gender for an individual, and so on and so forth. And for a company, what's the size? What's the industry? Having a clear picture of the customer will help you to synthesize if their model makes sense. Before going to the industry analysis, it's important to identify keywords that will lay foundation in your searches. So in finding keywords, there are three sources. First is from your client. Ask how would the client describe their company, list their terminologies, and also the service they provide. Next one is the nature of their company. Description of how the company operates and their mission and vision statement. And lastly, you can find the keywords based from your own description of their service, like based on your impression. So it's really important to be observant. Having a deep understanding of the company is a key. So communicate, communicate, communicate. In finding information, I tend to go broad to specific. So imagine this scenario. I searched the industry of my client first. Now that I have a clear view of the industry, I move to the existing competitors in the ecosystem. Then I use comparative analysis to segment the unique value proposition in which I will talk about later. Now that we have identified the client and keywords, let's move into bigger playground and we are ready to move to industry and market analysis. Remember the broad and specific, broad to specific scheme search I showed you before using keywords? You will need to apply it here. For example, you're working with an e-learning platform company. Based on the keywords you have identified, e-learning is your keyword. So try searching um, e-learning industry. Multitude of blogs and articles will pop out, and I want you to filter them according to source. It should be reliable. You will know if that the source is reliable from the track record of author and publisher. Now, I want you to look for CAGR in those articles, the annual growth rate of an investment over a specified period of time, longer than one year. Find the CAGR percent of the industry and there should, and along with that, there should be an estimate of the total value of the industry. After finding the CAGR, we will move to the existing acts and guidelines in place. What are the business going to do if they are not even allowed to operate, right? Checking acts and guidelines in place may help the company to expect and prepare for the operation change if there's any in place. Now we have laid the foundation for the bigger picture and we will move into something more specific. Ask the company whom they consider as their biggest competitor and you can use company X, Y, or Z to finding more competitors in the market. What the company might give you might not be it. There is more, just know when to stop looking. Identify competitors will prepare the company to recalculate to prevent from being outcompeted. 19% of startups fail because they get outcompeted. We need to perform a comparative analysis to identify the superiority or inferiority of the company against its competitors. In the, in the comparative table right here, you see that I listed all the features of service of the company that I'm working with. 
all the competitors that we have identified and validated are listed side by side. Now, I will scout through the products or service characteristic, and you can list what the competitors are doing and describe how well their product is on par with the company. With this exercise, you can, you can identify the service that they need to work on or their unique value proposition. So what's unique value proposition? It is the service or product in promise that is truly one of a kind. Not all companies as UVP, but this exercise helps them think and strategize how to achieve UVP. Performing comparative analysis in market or in an industry scoping stage, you can determine a unique feature on your client's products or service, whether your client will be outcompeted and your client or your client needs to pivot or they can, they can establish a strong case in their business plan. Understanding the current market is essential, whether or not the business has actual customers. Customer behavior and current environment status are necessary for success or failure of a business. First thing to consider is market need. Is the product or service really necessary? Why would the market care about the product or service? Does it really have an impact? 42% of startups fail because there is no market need. At this early stage, you can draw assumption or hypothesis in the information you gather. To validate your hypothesis for market need, you need to perform focus groups, interviews, or surveys and ask customers directly. Next up is customer trends. What's the current customer behavior? Are they buying similar products? Are they in a hype right now? Are they evading this type of product? Asking the clients directly is still the best choice for me when knowing more about trends. But if it's not possible, I use Google Trends to help me to efficiently search. I'll show you how to use Google Trends. In Google Trends, you can compare topics uh, based from Google search side by side. It's a very powerful data, especially if you wanted to get a clear picture of what's happening um, on the consumers. So for the sake of this lecture, uh, let's say I wanted to know more about the coffee, coffee companies, coffee chains. So we can include two coffee chains, which is Starbucks, so coffee house company in comparison with Tim Hortons, the fast food restaurant company. So as you can see here in Google Trends, you can play with different categories. So you can search worldwide and other different companies apart from Canada and it will give you all of the Google's uh, search-based data. So for this lecture, let's select it, Canada. In the time frame, it's up to you how long you wanna go back, how far or how short term that you wanted to see. But for me, let's 12 months is good. For the categories, you can search in different industries, different areas. but I will select all of categories. For the web search, you can see the image search, news, Google Shopping, and YouTube search. So it's really up to you to customize this search. But this is interest over time. This is not something causal. Um, it will just give you the ups and downs, but it won't, um, it won't give you the reason behind it. This 100% is not the actual population, but actually the percentage that is interested in this topic. So as you can see here, when I click into a different point, you will see the date from June 28 to July 4. So 48% is interested in Starbucks and 50% is interested in Tim Hortons. So as you move along, you can see it, but you see that there's a spike in December 20 to 26. 
in uh, Starbucks in Tim Hortons. So later on, I was I will get deeper into that so I can help you with more powerful search with this file. So let's use how like powerful this tool is first. So okay, for interest for Starbucks. As you can see, British Columbia has more interest in Starbucks, Yukon Territory, and Alberta. We can also support it by interest in Tim Hortons, which are the places that has interest. So you can see New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nunavut, Newfoundland, and Labrador, Nova Scotia. And you can also see the other subregions. You can also search by city. When you search by city, you will have more, um, more, more information about it. So, so let's take the subregions first. All right. Moving on, you can see the related queries, what they're asking, um, what are the pricing search terms, Starbucks holiday drinks 2020, two for one. So these are the menus, these are the search keys that they are finding. Next is uh, for search keys for Tim Hortons, so the hockey sticks and um, Tim Hortons roll up the rim 2021. So, this is the related query. So later, uh, a while ago, I talked about searching the spikes. So you can see the spikes here. It's quite big for um, the important. So let's say December 20 to 26, 2020. So we can go to the tab and search December 20, 20. Let's put this every time. 2020 importance. You have the wrong one. Importance. Number. So, so there's delivery delays, moving to takeout. Oh, there's also Tim Hortons gaining. So from those information that you can see of uh, what happened into that day, what is, why is that there's a spur of searches in Google? So that will, that's your, Point of entry into um, point of entry into knowing more searches in the customer terms, and this will be very helpful when you cannot perform a interview, you cannot perform a focus group for the company that you're working with. Google Trends can cover that up for you, and if you had the time right after, you can go on and search for participants to join you for the focus groups and interviews. Also, you can also disseminate surveys, but the, the difference between the quantitative and the qualitative research is that qualitative research, such as focus group, you tend to know more deeper the meaning behind your responses, but quantitative, the advantages of a quantitative research is that you get to quantify, you have figures to present, and that's the represent that could be like a representation of the actual population that you. Fourteen percent of startups fail because they tend to ignore their customer. Last but not the least is the global economic issue or scandal in place. For example, pandemic or industry scams. This can make or break a business. Now, let's pull all the information that we gathered in a SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and trends. Strength is something internal, advantages, the desirable feature that distinguishes a company from a competitor. So what makes this company strong? Weaknesses 
is also something internal. That's the disadvantages, the drawbacks that the company needs to improve. Opportunities. It's something external, environmental. It's a favorable circumstance that can benefit the company to grow. And lastly, threats. This is also external or environmental. So it's the hurdles that can cease or restrict the company. So it's a matter of putting everything together now. Uh, the design of the steps will make more sense in doing SWOT analysis. As you can see, since the strengths and weaknesses are more, is more internal, the company analysis will cover these areas. So of course, the UVP will fall on their strengths. Competitor advantages will fall on their weaknesses. The brand, customer base, and balance sheet will go hand in hand in strengths and weaknesses, depending on the situation of the company. It's in on, on your own discretion where to place those things. Next is the industry and market analysis will cover opportunities and threats. The CAGR, law restrictions, competitors, market need, consumer trends, economic issue or scandal will go hand in hand whether this will make or break the company. Moving forward, we as researchers, we perform for the best interest of the company. Communication with the stakeholder is important. We present information not to ridicule the business model, but to empower the company with knowledge. Information gathered may help the company to pivot or establish a strong case. We are the eyes of the company before moving into new markets. It might be hard to present facts for truths, but again, you are here to support them. So that's it. <laughs> that's the end of my presentation. And thank you so much for being with me today. So don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn, and I hope to see you soon. So if you have questions, we can schedule a call and have a discussion regarding market research. Just coordinate with Elevate, and we'll see you there. Bye.